Hello students, welcome to Sri Nath Academy. In this video, we are going to discuss about direct and inverse proportions. So, which is from the class Mathematics, 13th chapter. So, my name is Karthik Nune. We are creating videos on all chapters and all subjects from class 1 to class 12. So, please do subscribe our channel. Also, like our video, share our videos so that you will get the immediate updates from, uh, from us for that you have to hit the bell icon. Smash it, students. Okay. So, without wasting time, we are going to discuss about direct and inverse proportions chapter. Students. So, we are going to discuss the introduction part of this chapter. So, we will see the overview of this chapter, students. In the first, it is all about the introduction. So, there is a Mohan and he makes the tea for two people. For that, he uses 300 ml of water, two spoons of sugar one spoon of tea leaves and 50 ml milk suppose he wants to make a tea for five members how much amounts of all these ingredients he has to use can you know it and like that situations and there is first thing is about direct proportion so if cost of anything if cost of sugar increases per kg then if the cost of 1 kg sugar is some amount that is 36 then what is the cost of 3 kg sugar it is increased so if cost increases then quantity is also increases or if quantity increases cost is also increasing it is called as the direct proportion we are going to discuss more about that and next thing is indirect proportion so the next topic is inverse proportion so previous case in the case of direct proportion if quantity increases cost increases here if something quantity it may be anything increases the alternate one will decrease so it is inverse proportion fits okay so this is the third topic we are having so we are going to solve some example problems in this chapter friends and that is the end of this chapter if you see here so this is the overview of this chapter friends hope you have understood it and uh, so we start our discussion regarding direct and indirect proportions direct proportions and indirect proportions so it is the chapter 13 we are going to discuss about it introduction what we have to discuss about these students okay so here I have told you know Mohan is preparing the tea for him and for his sister. So for two people, he is preparing the tea. So for that, what he is using? He is using the 300 ml of water, two spoons of sugar, and one spoon of tea leaves, and 50 ml of milk. Someday their friends has came and he want to make a tea for five members and in which proportion he has to increase the uh, water uh, and sugar and the tea leaves and the milk can you know it so here the increment must be in a proportion it is in direct proportion friends so in this type of situations we require this chapter and if a student takes a 20 minutes if two students okay if two students are taking the 20 minutes to arrange the chairs for an assembly Suppose, uh, if uh, if to do that same task, if you are uh, yeah, if you have taken the five students, how much time they will take to complete the same work? So in this type of situation, we have to use this chapter. And automatically, if the number of articles purchased by you increases, the total cost is also increases. And if you deposited the money more in the bank, then the interest you are getting is also more. And if a vehicle is moving with some speed and its speed is increasing, what happens? The time to travel the distance decreases. So whenever the speed increases, so the time of journey will decrease. He will reach us in less time. And there is some work. And some workers are doing that work. Suppose if the number of workers are doing that work increases, then the time taken for that work to be done decreases. Okay. So this type of situations where we require the direct proportion and indirect proportion. 
so we have to learn about them okay students direct and indirect proportions so what are the situations when we are facing all these thing so direct proportion direct proportion okay if you take if you take a look on it the first thing is so if the cost of 1 kg sugar 1 kg sugar is there and its cost is 36 rupees then what is the cost for 3 kg of sugar how much you have to pay to the shopkeeper will you know yes we know that is simply 108 rupees how you will know means we have multiplied this 36 with 3 then you will get the 108 why you have multiplied with with 3 only which means here you have multiplied it with 3 so previously you want only 1 kg sugar now you want 3 kg sugar which means 3 times the previous one then the cost for it is 36 then the cost is also has to be multiplied with the 3 okay so here you have increased it 3 times here also it has to be increased 3 times it is the direct proportion suppose if you have to buy 5 kg and 8 kg what happens here you have increased the 5 times then you have to increase this also 5 times here you have increased the 8 times then here also you have increased it 8 times that is the case happening here students so if you see here weight of the sugar in cages 1 kg 3 kg 5 kg 6 kg 8 kg 10 kg so 3 kg means 3 times 5 kg means 5 times 6 kg means 6 times it is multiplied now for the cost cost has to be multiplied with the same number of times that is the, here it is three times so you have to three here it five cages so i have to multiply it with five times so it is the called as the direct proportional if the quantity increases cost is also increases and the ratio of the cost increase to the quantity increases same here students and there is another example suppose there is a car and it uh, uses 4 liters petrol to travel a distance of 60 kilometers. Now I have given it a total liters of petrol. How much distance it can travel? You simply say that is 180 kilometers, sir. But I will ask you how you will know. Then you will say here previously for 4 liters it is 60 kilometers, sir. Here the number of liters are increased 3 times. That is 4 into 3 is equal to 12. So that's why it also the number of distance has to be called is also multiplied three times that is 16 to 3 is 180 kilometers sir. So if the liters increases kilometers distance is also increases both are in the direct proportion students. So for 4 liters it has traveled 60 and if suppose if it is for 8 liters how much distance it will travel it will travel 120 kilometers why here from 4 to 8 it is multiplied by 2 it is the 2 times. So 60 has to be multiplied by the 2 and 4 to 12 it is 3 times. So 60 has to be multiplied 3 times like that you have to do students. So if you, if you take the petrol as the x and the distance in kilometers as the y that is x by y. <clears throat> what happens in every case that is 4 by 60 that is 8 by 120 that is 12 by 180 okay if you see in every situation every situation every situation what happens 4 by 16 is 1 by 15 and 8 by 120 it also gives 1 by 15 in 12 by 120 it also gives 1 by 15 so in everything the ratio is same which is the k we can uh, assume it some constant so what we can understand is that students x and y are in direct proportion x is directly proportional to y you will write it like that one increases another is also increases and the ratio of x and y is equals to k which means which equals to some constant some fixed number whatever the time if you find out the ratio every time you will get 1 by 15 or any number like that which is fixed students so that is x by y equal to k or x equal to ky you have to remember this concept okay students it is the dist uh, and one more thing you can is x1 by x2 is equals to sorry x1 by y1 
is equals to x2 by y2 okay x1 by y which means 4 by 60 you see it is 1 by 15 and it has equal to 8 by 120 okay so that is the case happening here students okay <coughs> So, like that in the case of first at the beginning we have discussed about Mohan no. So, he has to make the T for 5 members. So, in the beginning for the 2 members he has used how much? Can you see it now? He has used 300 ml of milk water and 2 spoons and 1 spoon of tea uh, sorry tea leaves and 50 ml milk so for 5 for 5 how many times it has increased so here uh, first thing sometimes he, this is the situation students uh, here it is for 2 persons then these are the values then for 5 persons what is the value we don't know suppose if it is for 6 person we can you can simply multiply 2 with 3 so in this type of situations you have to find out for one person how much quantities will so, <clears throat> one person means you have to divide by two, reduce by half. So, the 150 will becomes for one person as 150, 300 as becomes 150 and two spoons becomes one spoon and one spoon become half spoon, 50 will becomes 25 ml. So, for one uh, member T, these are the quantities and for five members, you have to multiply all these in the ratio of five times. That is 150 into 5, that is 1 into 5, that is 1 by 2 into 5, that is 25 into 5, which means 750 ml of water and 5 spoons of sugar and 5 by 2 spoons of tea leaves and 125 ml of what? 125 ml of milk that is the way friends okay you have to use like that and coming to the examples example one here so the cost of five meters of a particular quality of cloth is two ten rupees so for five meters cloth it costs two ten rupees and next for two meters for four meters for ten meters for thirteen meters how much it costs how much it costs students so for that we have to take this as the maybe you can take it as x1 and it as the x2 and you have to take it as y1 and you have to take it as y2 what we know is x1 by y1 is equals to x2 by y2 and this ratio is equals to some constant because these are directly proportional so that implies x1 means what it is the 5 litre 5 x y1 is 210 then it is equals to 2 divided by question mark and we have to find out this value and we can we can write it maybe as y2 from this y2 is what is 2 into 210 by 5 then y2 is equals to how much you have to calculate this so it will becomes 84 okay students so like that you have to do that things okay and the same situation for y3 for y3 test what for y3 you have to compare it with anything and you will get 4 into 210 by 5 and for y4 it is 10 into and for y5 it is 13 into 210 by 5 like that you have to do these problems friends okay next you can do this students i will explain you this example so in this example an electric pole 14 meters high has a shed of 10 meters so there is an electric pole and it's gas it is 14 meters high and it has a shed of 10 meters okay and there is a tree whose height you have to find and it is shed is 15 meters again direct proportional you have to use students here 
So if the weight of 12 sheets of thick paper is 14 grams, there are 12 sheets of paper and it weighs 40 grams. And how many sheets of the same paper would weigh? We know this, we don't know about this X2, weigh two and a half kilograms, which means 2500 grams. Okay. <clears throat> if you divide them, 12 by x2. So what we know is x1 by x y1 is equals to x2 by y2. This is the direct proportional formula. Here the x1 is 12 and the y1 is 40 and the x2 we don't know how to find and the y2 is 2500 grams. And our aim is to find out the x2 which is 2500 into 12 by 40. So it is you have to cancel it 0 0 and it is uh, you have to cancel it like that and finally you will get x2 value which is 750 so 750 sheets of papers are there okay so there is another example try your own students i will help you with this example five so there is a map and there is a scale on it it says x1 is 2 it is 3 0 0 0 0 0 0 how many zeros 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 0 students 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so if you write it like that so how much it is to, such a big number it is you know so it is 3 crores almost 3 crores okay so for 1 centimeter the real distance is like that okay kilometers and for 4 centimeters what is the distance what is the y2 so again the formula which we are using that is 1 divided by 3 into the leave can write it as 3 into 10 power 7 is equals to 4 divided by y2 so what we want is y2 and it is simply 4 into 3 into 10 power 7 by 1 and it is 4 is a 12 into 10 power 7 Okay, students, you have to write like this. And it is 1200 kilometers. That's it, students. So, next thing is about the inverse proportion, students. It is the another topic in this chapter, which is inverse proportion. Okay, inverse proportion. So, what is the difference between the direct proportion and the inverse proportion? I will tell you in a simple way. In the case of direct proportion, if one quantity increases, obviously the another quantity will also increase. But in the case of inverse proportion, if one quantity increases, another quantity will decrease. So, it is the inverse of the previous thing, the opposite of the previous thing. That's why it is the inverse proportion. Okay. If you see, <coughs> Suppose if there is some work to do and if the number of workers increases, the time taken for that work to decreases. So previously there are two workers working for work, work students and the time taken is one day. And if the if now we have put it four workers, then the time taken is one by two of day, half day. Work will be complete in a half day okay students that is the main exam main example here so here uh, as this quantity is increasing this quantity is decreasing so it is the inverse proportion number of workers increases time taken is decreases okay students so if you see here there is uh, jahita can go to her school in four different ways so there is a girl called Jahida. She can go to her school in four different ways. One is walking, running, cycling, and by car. Suppose if she is going on walking, her speed is three kilometers per hour. Suppose if she goes on running, her speed is six kilometers per hour, which means twice the times speed as walking. Suppose if she goes by cycle. Her speed is 9 km per hour, which is thrice the time 
of the walking suppose if she goes on by car then her speed is 45 km per hour which is 15 times the speed of walking so if you see here the speed is increasing continuously by changing the vehicle the speed is increasing whenever the speed or the velocity is increasing in 2 times 3 times 15 times what happens to the time taken to reach the school if you see first the time taken is 30 minutes next the time taken is 15 minutes which is the 1 by 2 of the first case and next the time taken is the 10 minutes which means 1 by 3rd of the first case and next the time taken is the 2 minutes which is 1 by 15th of the first case so here the uh, speed is increasing at the same time the time is decreasing so at what rate the speed is increasing at the same rate the time is decreasing we have to see this friends this is called as inverse proportion if one quantity increases another quantity decreases okay students and one more thing if you observe here if you multiply both the things there is a oh, constant suppose if you take three if you go on by three kilometers and the speed is 30 uh, time is 30 minutes then it is 90 and if you go on six kilometers and the time taken is 15 minutes here also it is 90 by bicycle it is nine kilometers and the time taken is 10 it is also 90 and in the by the car it is 45 kilometers and the time taken is 2 minutes here also it is 90 so the product of the two quantities is constant always okay students so this is the case we are having here so so there is another example we have to see it okay so a school wants to spend 6000 rupees for math, mathematics books max books so if they bought each book each book at the cost of for 40 rupees how many books they can buy they can buy 50 books okay each book cost is 40 the total amount is 6000 how many books they can buy they can buy 150 books okay at the same time if the cost of each book increases suppose if the cost of each book is 50 rupees then what is the cost of how many books they can bought with the same funding so they can bought only 120 books only so if you see here if the cost of each book is 60 rupees and if the funding is same they can bought only 100 books so as the cost of each book is increasing the number of books they can find bought is decreasing so keeping the amount when are keeping the amount constant so if you multiply these two things you will get 6000 every case you will get the same students so if you see here the ratio that is 40 by 50 is how much it is 4 is to 5 which is x1 by x2 x2 another case of here if you see that is 150 by 120 it is 5 by 4 okay students so which is y2 by so which is equals to how much so you both in the both cases what you can observe is the ratio is reverse the ratio is reverse it is the x1 and it is the x2 it is the y1 and it is the y2 so x1 and x1 by x2 and it is the y1 and y2 does the x1 by x2 is equals to y1 by y2 no x1 by x2 is equals to y2 by y1 which means what x1 y1 is equals to x2 y2 which means x into y is a constant at any time if you multiply x is, is 40 no and if you multiply 40 with y means number of books 150 what you will get you will get 6000 even though if you increase 150 then y is what 120 in this case also you will get 6000 so the here value is constant so x into y is constant which means x is inversely proportional to y 
So this domain it is called as indirect reading proportion and x into y is equals to k which is the some constant. And another thing here you have to remember is x1 by x2 is equals to y2 by y1. You have to remember this also. So these three are things that x is inversely proportional to y and x into y is a constant and x1 by x2 equal to y2 by y1. Okay. But in the, in the previous case, if you compare in the previous case, x is directly proportional to y in the case of direct relations and x by y is equals to constant in the case of previous relation and x1 by y1 is equals to x2 by y2 which means you can rename it as x1 by x2 is equals to y1 by y2 in the case of direct relation. So this is the difference between direct and is the case of indirect. Okay students. So it is inverse proportion stress. We will choose some problems. So example seven. So here six pipes are filling the water tank. Six pipes are filling the water tank. Water tank is fixed. And how much time they are taking? One hour, 20 minutes. One hour, 20 minutes, which is equals to 80 minutes. So six pipes are taking 80 minutes to fill the tank. If one pipe is not working, if we are having only five pipes, how much time they take? So here just observe, just first observe. Thus, the pipes, number of pipes and the time are in direct proportion or indirect proportion. If you see here six pipe means six pipes are working. From the six pipes, uh, water is coming. Okay. So, uh, if five pipes are working, one is not working, what happened? Some amount of water is not getting. Okay, some amount of water is not getting. So, uh, our aim is to fill the tank. So, one pipe is not working. So, if all the pipes are working, uh, it will take 80 minutes. If one pipe is not getting worked, water is not getting inside. So, it takes uh, the work of that pipe has to be distributed all the other pipes and it has to take some more time to uh, fill the same water tank. Five pipes are doing the work and the time will be increased automatically. So, as the number of pipes are decreasing, the time is increasing. So, it is inverse proportion. So, in the case of inverse proportion, what are the formulas we are having? That x into y is equals to constant. Okay, students. Or another thing is x1 by x2 is equals to y2 by y1. And what is x1 here? It is first number of pipes are there six pipes. Later, there are only five pipes. At the first, the at the first the time is 80 minutes. And later the time is y2 minutes. And our aim is to find out the y2. Then y2 is equals to how much? y2 is equals to x1 y1 by x2. y2 is equals to x1 y1 by x2. So x1 is 6 and y1 is 80 by x2 is 5. So this is why our way of doing the answer should then what you will get that y2 that is the uh, thing is 96. So that is the way of doing the answer students. So I will do this example line. Okay. If there are 15 workers can build a wall in 48 hours. So 15 workers are there are working for 48 hours of the time to build a wall. Now if the number of workers increases or the number of workers required to complete the work in 30 hours. So here if you see that hours or the time is decreased. As the time is decreased, the number of workers required will be increased. Then only time will be decreased. It is also inverse proportion relation. Okay. Inverse proportional relation. So in the case of inverse proportional relation, x1 by x2 is equals to y2 by y1. Here the x1 is 15 and the x2 we have to find out and the y1 is 48 hours and the y2 is 30 hours. So finally x2 is equals to x1 y1 by 
y2 which is 15 into 48 divided by 30 so it is 2 and it is the 20 so how many workers required that is 24 workers are required to do the task previously 15 workers are required now 24 workers are required to do the task okay friends so that is the end of the chapter friends so finally our chapter is completed hope you have understood well friends if you have any doubts regarding this chapter please do comment below we are always there to answer you we are always there to respond to you so uh, we will see the summary of this chapter then we will complete this so direct and in the inverse proportions it is the interaction we have there are many real life situations where direct proportion and indirect proportions are required uh, sometimes uh, if the number of quantities increases automatically the cost increases at the same time the speed or work de increases then the time decreases direct proportion means if some quantity increases automatically another quantity will also increases so uh, here what happens is the direct proportional is x by y is equals to k always the ratio of x by y is k and x equals to ky we have discussed about that and x1 by y1 is equal to x2 by y2 and in the case of indirect proportion if one quantity increases another quantity will decreases we have discussed about that topic also okay that is if the number of workers are increases time will decreases so in, in this it is the inversely proportional and we will represent it with <coughs> x1 y1 equals to uh, x2 y2 is equals to k constant x1 by x2 equals to y2 by y1 and here whenever the case of directly proportional it represented as like this x directly proportional to y inversely proportional is x directly proportional to 1 by y so that is the end of the chapter friends so chapter is completed and the summary is also completed that's it friends don't forget to subscribe us share us like us hit the bell icon all the best for your future exams bye bye